Thank you, Your Excellency. I would now like to invite Her Excellency Maria Basols Delgado, the Ambassador of Spain, who will be presenting at the city of Bilbao. Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to also start by thanking the EU delegation and the Penang Institute for having me here today. I'm not an expert on cities, and I'm not an expert on green, smart cities, but uh, let me try to give you a snapshot a little bit longer than my Dutch colleague on what Bilbao is doing and, uh, and uh, how it's gotten to do what it's doing today. Uh, okay. Oh, there we go. Uh, during the past decade, for the first time in history, we find that almost 50% of the world population lives in cities. Expectations are that in the next decade, the urban population will reach 80%. So in 1959, there were 80 cities in the world with only 1 million inhabitants, with more than 1 million inhabitants. In 2000, this number had grown into 365. Cities are then, and therefore, looking for new models of urbanity to integrate the demographic, economic, social, spatial, and institutional factors which drive global competition. As greater urbanization brings greater urban challenges, the innovative design of cities will need to provide the answers to building, as my Dutch colleague and my EU colleague said, sustainable and creative economies in the 21st century. Let's take a look at a closer look at what Bilbao has done in the past years and how it has faced the challenges. Bilbao is one of the three main cities in the Basque country, which in turn is one of the 17 autonomous communities in Spain, in which Spain is divided. Metropolitan Bilbao is home to about half the population of the whole Basque country. So the Basque autonomous community is made up of 2,172,000 inhabitants. Metropolitan Bilbao is almost half that size, 953,000. And the municipality of Bilbao itself is 354,860 the last time we counted. <laughs> the city of Bilbao has come a very, very long way from the decade of the, the 80s decade, when it was immersed in a profound crisis and decline, which it had managed to overcome almost 30 years later, reinventing itself as a city and adapting to the new times. So in a way, we can say that Bilbao has come from being a city of iron to becoming a city of titanium with a knowledge-based economy. The success of Bilbao has been supported by four factors. First factor, the people. The people and their willingness to work hard and stand up and change the dramatic situation in which they found themselves and about which I will speak a little bit later on. Today, Bilbao is a city with highly skilled population. Second factor, the economy. The urban regeneration has allowed to create the necessary conditions for the economic and social development of the city and to boost new technologies, innovation, entrepreneurship, creativity, and knowledge. Now, let me give you an example. 20 years ago, Bilbao, in Bilbao, the industrial sector industry represented 49% of the economy and services represented 36%. Today, services represent 62% of the city's economy and the industry represents 27%. But this industry has also changed and it, now is, and it now is an industry with high added value. This transformation has been achieved through support for emerging sectors with very high level of research, development and investigation. Third element, innovation. Bilbao has created the necessary conditions to favor knowledge, innovation, and creativity, and with the main objective of reactivating the economy and generating employment. Some of the most important projects are the Zorrozaurre Creative District, the Digital City District, and the Innovation Hubs, among others. Fourth, let me see if I have the correct one. 
I think so. Has it changed? Yes. Uh, fourth element is the environment. Baibao has made a bet to protect and preserve the city's environment through the control of pollution, the creation of attractive natural conditions, and the management of resources. Now, we have to go back to see what the progress was all about. We need to see a little bit of the history. The foundation of Bilbao dates back to, one th uh, to the 1300s, and its origin is fundamentally uh, it, this city was constructed because it was a strategic location as an internal port. Bilbao is located in a river bend that we call a ria or a sea inlet that allows the navigability and as a, consequence, as a consequence it improved its construction, the creation of Bilbao, improved the exit of goods to the Bay of Biscayne, the sea, and avoided almost 20 kilometers of ground transportation to reach the coastline. It was a commercial city first, and then it turned into a mining city to develop later on into an industrial city linked to steel and shipbuilding. Until the uh, 80s in the 20th century, Bilbao grew because of the industrial economic rise, consolidating two things, three things. First, a historical area, the Casco Viejo, then a new central area beside the historical area where the high residential quality and urban planning was done. And then on the outskirts, an endless number of working class neighborhoods all along the mountainside with very high population density, low urban quality that concentrated the biggest part of the social problems that Bilbao had. Bilbao plunges into a crisis in 1983, but this crisis had really begun in the 1980s at the very beginning. First, because it, uh, the first industrialized economies from Southeast Asia emerged and entered the global market with more competitive prices in their products, with a low degree of added value, and, that, and products that consumed a huge amount of human resources. The traditional Bilbao industry would, could not stand the competition, and the economic decline of the territory began with a continuous closure of companies. It was almost a decade of continuous crisis in the traditional sector of steel and shipbuilding, which reached an unemployment rate of 27%. In August 18, 1983, strong floods affected the Nervion, the river's basin, leaving underwater both riverbanks and affecting the historic center of Bilbao and some neighborhoods such as La Peña and El Peñascal. Besides the enormous loss of life, the city ended up immersed in a depression. The floods and the industrial decline as well as the most active period of the terrorist group ETA, represented the deep crisis for, a deep crisis for Bilbao and for the entire, entire territory of, the, of Biscay. So it's really a triple crisis that they were facing. First, an economic crisis because of the loss of their traditional economy. Second, an urban crisis because of the degree of the deterioration of the working class neighborhoods and the consequences of the flood. And third, an environmental crisis because the consequences of decades of in industrial exploitation and had generated air pollution, big surfaces of contaminated soils, and a totally deteriorated river that became the spillway for all the industrial activity. As a response to this very delicate situation, the, it, the uh, Bilbao authorities and other authorities began a holistic process of revitalizing Bilbao that has given, as a result, a unique urban revolution. Bilbao is today an exemplary city that continues to reinvent itself and evolve amidst dynamic changes and serves as an inspiration to cities worldwide. The experience of Bilbao, how Bilbao came from the 80s um, situation to today, is, called, is what we call a comprehensive city project, incrementally executed through 25 urban projects. They're all here. They're all lined up there. Over 25 years. And this, these 25 urban, urban projects through 25 years have 
achieved a profound transformation of the city. I'm not going to comment on all of them. I, I have chosen only four or five of them to comment to you very shortly. First of all, the historic center. The historic center is a space with the greatest identity in Bilbao, and it remained completely destroyed after 1983. Today, it's a diverse compact space with a mixture of uses and activities, highly educated population, social balance, a renewed traditional architecture, good urbanization, high social density, and an incomparable metropolitan connectivity through the metro and tramway that I will speak about later on. Another important project was the port extension works that began in 1993. What they did was mainly shift the port activity from where it was in the city to the mouth of the river, 20 kilometers onwards. Uh, and this, what this did was open up inner port areas with a high strategic value for, new makeup, for the new makeup of the city, creating an opportunity for new bridges to be built and thus providing the city with a new physical, financial and social lifelines. The freeing up of the port and industrial spaces along the river uh, gave way to main projects for the new city of Bilbao. Uh, the vision, but these new projects were only, uh, uh, were only, uh, uh, could only be done with a very big vision of what the city would have to look like with a lot of political leadership, with private uh, public partnerships and the development of uh, intelligent in instruments to do this for the transformation of the city. One of such instruments was the Bilbao RIA 2000. The Bilbao RIA 2000 is a company that was created in uh, 1992 with the intention of recovering formal industrial space around the city. Bilbao RIA 2000 coordinates and executes projects in relation to town planning, transportation, and the environment. And all, is, all of this is done not only with the municipality of Bilbao, but also with other institutions. Central administration in Spain has helped, and public-private collaboration. Another project that I really wanted to uh, underline today and to bring to your attention today was the cleaning up of Metropolitan Bilbao. 95% of the pollutant load of the river has been eliminated. This amb ambitious plan required an, invest an investment of 800 million euros, roughly six times more than the cost of building the Guggenheim Museum, and it was financed by increasing the rates paid by citizens for water consumption. The environmental recovery of the river and the most important mo was one of the most important projects, and it en enabled the city to open up to the river. Up until then, the city had lived with her back to the river because the river was so polluted. Once the uh, river was recovered, then the city opened up to this river. The bridges have a specific significance in the urban model of Bilbao. They are not only elements of connectivity in, in between the left and the right margins of the Nervion River. They are also physical infrastructures for social interaction. In addition, they act as sculptures which strengthen the image of innovation and modernity of a city that looks forward towards the future with optimism. Transportation is the other sector I wanted to touch upon because it's the great bid to improve metropolitan connectivity in this city has been essential to recover uh, Bilbao. Since its inauguration in 1995, the metro of Bilbao, which was designed by Norman Foster, has uh, been used by one, 1,000 million people. The other uh, big transportation project that was done was the burying underground the existing railway lines and this has been key to improve urban spaces. Once you bury the uh, railway lines underground you free up urban spaces up in the, in the, in the existing um, uh, urban spaces and you can create other things. The other transportation mode that is very very popular in Bilbao is the tram. Uh, you can have electrical trams, they're non-polluting trams, but you can also have non-electrical trams that have a number of hours 
of uh, usage around the city. And the tram has become a key player in the functional integration of new projects being developed around and on the riverfront. Bilbao's tramway is a new surface transportation system which connects old Bilbao, the historical center, with the more residential area, the Ensanche. Finally, the Bilbao International Airport, designed by the Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava, very well known in Spain and outside of Spain. It has already uh, uh, transported almost 4 million passengers per year. One of the things that I would like to comment on is what we call the Guggenheim effect. The Guggenheim, as you know, is the main museum in Bilbao, it rep but it represents also not only an art piece in, it, in and by itself, but also a society's willingness to change and the confidence and determination that it is possible to reinvent itself and build a 21st century Bilbao upon territorial ruins and, exhausted product and an exhausted production system. New urban hotels are also need to be mentioned because they not only open conference and event centers that are very much needed in Bilbao, but because they're also landmarks of the city. Uh, Frank O'Gerty Guggenheim Museum is one of the most spectacular architectural works of the 20th century, and it's one of the most popular visiting attractions, as is Norman Foster's design of the Bilbao Underground. Both of these architects, winners of the prestigious Pritzker Prize, as along with other Spanish ar architects, have helped in developing important projects in Bilbao. But it's not only them, it's also other artists such as Salvador Dalí, as Chiyida, uh, Jeff Koons, Luis Bourgeois, Vicente Larrea, all of these uh, artists have bitched in and have also given new dimensions to many of the urban spaces in the city of Bilbao. Bilbao has certainly come a long way. In 2011, on November 17th, the city of Bilbao was awarded the European Public Service Award in the theme Smart Public Service Delivery in a Cold Economic Climate for its project Political Management Based on Economic Stringency and Strategic Budgets. The EPSA Awards recognize best practices at European levels in the field of modernization and of public administration. It is important to know that, Bilbao, that the Bilbao City Council has defined transparency as one of its major action lines, which it has translated into quality service for citizens in line with their expectations. The City of Bilbao uh, the city of Bilbao has a commitment, and its commitment is to the citizens, it, and it wants to achieve the maximum social rate of return on the use of public resources, embodied in benefiting from quality service, services aimed at the real needs of the citizens. What does this entail? This entails efficiently providing the basic services entrusted to a municipality, as well as dealing with the numerous needs of the different collectivities and neighborhoods of the city. And this has been, down, has been done without neglecting the investments needed for the future development of the city. Invested, the investments that have accounted for over 1,000 million euros of municipal funding over the last eight years and the repayment of public debt. The city of Bilbao has managed to achieve, despite this negative economic scenario with which it started, uh, it has managed to achieve a widespread increase in public uh, deficit and borrowing. It has, excuse me, it has managed to increase the public deficit and borrowing. One of the most difficult um, object uh, objectives for the public administration has thus become not only to give back and to pay back this debt, but also to keep on growing debt free. And Bilbao is now a debt-free city as of April 2011, while it, at the same time it has maintained high levels of operations, services, and investments. I'm almost done. Two words on the future. The future of cities uh, uh, are now uh, being dealt with by strategies like the joint regional articulation of cities in the world. The United States project American Super Cities in 2050, 
2050 with 10, or 10 urban poles is one of such projects. In Europe, this project uh, has also had some experiences, the joint strategy between Malmö and Copenhagen, about which my uh, Danish colleague, I'm sure, will speak uh, after. So this regional vision is now taking over many, many cities. What is Bilbao's regional vision? Bilbao's regional vision, uh, uh, once the first thing that, that Bilbao has done was expand its urban pole. It has gone from 354,000 inhabitants, which were taken care of by the municipality and by all these projects. Now it strives to take care of 1.5 million, the larger metropolitan area. And it has now become the third big urban pole in Spain, just behind Barcelona and, um, and uh, Madrid. Bilbao, regional Bilbao, as they uh, consider themselves now, has 23 historical sites, nine industrial areas, 200 kilometers of coastline, and diverse natural areas of outstanding la landscape value. During the coming years, Bilbao will continue working on the development of new projects aimed at consolidating the bid for a city adapted to new scenarios paying special attention to, to innovation. For a city to remain competitive in a global scale, uh, it must be connected both externally and internally. For the external connectivity, <laughs> Bilbao will continue in the future developing physical and technological infrastructures aimed at improving the external accessibility of the city, turning Bilbao into a global interconnected city. For the internal connectivity, Bilbao will continue developing projects and contribute to the accessibility of citizens as well as new suitable transport uh, systems, among them the bicycle and also a um, project similar to what uh, my Dutch colleague uh, talked about in Amsterdam, the car, t car to stop, where you can take a small electrical car and go from one place to the of the city to another. Bilbao is striving to create, attract, and retain talent and, and, and become an intellectual capital. Therefore, new spaces of opportunities have been created. The Thorothaure Island project will be reconverted into a knowledge district, and the Bilbao Digital and Design City uh, project establishes a network of specialized services. This is the end slide. I didn't want to end my uh, small presentation on Bilbao without uh, telling you two things. First of all, this is work in progress. So the Bilbao municipality and its authorities, as well as the private sector, know that much more needs to be done. But for now, recognition is what has been achieved, and is, it is at hand. Uh, Bilbao was selected to participate in 2010 in the urban best practice areas at the Shanghai exhi exhibition, and it has received the Lee Kuan Yew World P City Prize in recognition of its integrated and holistic approach in urban transformation. But this is also the other uh, element to uh, Bilbao's success has been its mayor. Mayor Iñaki um, Ascuna, who unfortunately now is, is, is very sick, but he's still mayor of the city. Mayor uh, Ascuna has managed to not only transform the city, but has also managed to do it in a financially responsible way. This is why uh, the Bilbao Innovative Managed Model has been recently uh, recognized through its mayor, who has been awarded in January 2013 with the World Mayor Award conceived by cities, by the city's majors, major foundation. With this, I end the, my presentation on Bilbao. I would like to tell you that this is one of the several cities where um, Spain has done innovation. The mayor of uh, Kuala Lumpur and the deputy minister of federal territories have just come back from a trip that has taken them to see smart cities in Spain. This trip uh, took them to Madrid, Bilbao, Seville, and Barcelona. Hopefully they've come back with new ideas and also with lessons learned on experiences that uh, unfortunately didn't go well for us. So you learn the good and you learn the bad. Thank you very much.